Today we're making Swedish meatballs with the most delicious sauce in the world. Coming up right now. Okay, so we love to go over the ingredients on this channel. We don't mess around. We show you exactly what you need so you can make it 100% every time. We have three quarter pound of ground pork. I have three quarter pound of ground beef. That's 80-20 beef. By the way, this tray right here is what's going in the meatballs. In addition to that, we have one onion, medium onion that I minced up and three cloves of garlic that I made into a paste. We're gonna cook those first, saute them for a few minutes in two tablespoons of butter. So then cooking the onion and the garlic's gonna mellow it out a little bit and it's gonna go added, it's gonna be added into our bread mixture, our panade. And how do we make the panade? We're gonna use six slices of white bread, half a cup of milk. We also have two eggs, that's to bind it. Basically to keep our meatballs together. We have a half a teaspoon of allspice. I have, a, well, I said a quarter cup of parsley. That looks more like a half a cup. It's fine, it's gonna be great. And uh, salt and pepper too. Two and a half teaspoons of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. So that's for the meatballs. Before I go out over to the sauce, we're gonna bake these meatballs. On the website, I fried them. You can do either or, you're gonna get excellent results. But by baking them, I'll be able to make the sauce at the same time. So speed it up a little bit and you can speed it up for yourself by doing that too. Okay, so for the sauce, we have seven tablespoons of flour and seven tablespoons of butter. That's gonna make a roux. We'll cook it a little bit, get it a little golden. Then we will put in a half a cup of dry white wine. It'll give a little bit of tang to it. If you can't have alcohol, just omit it and then just continue on with the recipe. We have four cups of low sodium chicken stock. I used chicken base to make this. I have a half a cup of heavy cream and I have a half a cup of sour cream. Those are both gonna go into our sauce. We also have two tablespoons of Worcester sauce and we have one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. We got a little bit of allspice and nutmeg, quarter teaspoon of each. We'll put more salt and pepper. We're gonna make it taste really good. We have egg noodles here. This is what a lot of times you will see it served over. You don't have to do that. You can put it over rice. You can put it over mashed potatoes. You can eat it by itself. You could even put it over pasta, like really good pasta, like pappardelle or something like that. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, you, know, you can make a sandwich. You could do whatever you like. Let's make our meatballs right now. So I have the six slices of bread. Now listen, you can use seven, and if the meatballs are a little too wet, you can just put a little bit more breadcrumbs, do like a quarter cup at a time. What we're gonna do now is we'll just cut off the crust here on the edges. You know, you can put the crust in there, but the, having just the white part of the bread will make a better mixture. This is just like when you're making any type of meatball. And you know, when you make any type of meatball, you can also use breadcrumbs. You don't have to use the bread. Okay, so here's my pieces. They're fairly small. And here's my milk. There's a little bit of allspice in there that uh, when I was prepping the ingredients, it got in there. This is a half a cup of milk. So I need a little bit more. That's not quite enough. I'm gonna, just gonna add some water in here and then. Clean hands, get your clean hands in there. Just start mashing the heck out of this. Now you can also use your fork. So how come you'll call this a panade, but you won't call fond fond? God. <laughs> Don't answer that. God. There's intrigue there. I'm taking a fork now and I'm gonna mash it up even more. And I might have put a little too much liquid back in here. So the original amount of half a cup of milk might be enough. So listen, just try to get it where most of the cubes are gone, where it's like very much like a paste, but even still, let this sit for 10 minutes before you move on to mixing your meatballs. That'll give us enough time right now to saute our onions and garlic. So I just have a pan, medium pan right here. Doesn't have to be big. Medium heat on here, that's it. I was just telling Tara, like, I think it's the reason I have with the word, it kind of reminds me of um, like the Seinfeld episode when the woman's like nonstop, she's like, have you seen my fiance? Where is my fiance? That's what I feel about fond. It's like, here's my fond. Do we do this with my fond? Don't lose your fond. My fond, you don't want to burn your fond. It's like, all right, guy, I got it. You like the word, you know? <laughs> Any cooking video circa 2015 and forward pretty much says it 50 times per video, you know? So that's why like, I originally just said, I'm not gonna do that. So if you've been looking for the reason why I don't say it, that's it. It's kind of silly, right? And I've always watched probably more cooking videos than anybody on YouTube. And that word was never in an old Julia Child, Jacques Pepin, or any of those other cooks. Every cook would just call it, and I'm talking about chefs, cooks on TV for 30 years, brown bits. So I continue that tradition 
here at Sip and Feast. It is brown bits. So I wanna get these soft, so let them go for about five minutes on medium heat in two tablespoons of butter. I forgot to say, add a pinch of uh, salt that'll help the onions release their liquid a uh, little bit. Here's the three tablespoons of garlic. This is the minced garlic, or actually I should say garlic paste I made, so I grated that. So just cook it in here for 30 seconds and then we will turn off the heat. Right when it starts to get fragrant, it's getting very fragrant right now, but we don't want that to burn and it will burn quickly because it's a paste. I'm gonna turn off the heat and I'll just continue to cook it now with the heat off. The residual heat of the pan will continue to do its job. Pull that off and we'll be back. Onions, garlic are off to the side. You can see this paste now, so see this? Just get in there if you need to do more. It's been sitting for about 10 minutes. You can get in there with that fork, you can do it. If you're having a hard time mashing it into a better paste with the fork, use a different tool. Or just use your hands, which, which works very well. All right, this is good though, this is a nice paste. Here is the onions and garlic that we just did. So I'm gonna mix this in there together too. And then we'll make our meatballs. We'll combine everything else. Okay, at this time, you can, if you're gonna bake them, you can put your oven at 400 degrees and set the rack to the middle level. I mis misspoke before. I said three quarter pound of each of these. It's actually a pound of each. A pound of ground pork and a pound of 80-20 chuck. I always use 80-20 chuck. I just think it's so much more flavorful than using 90 or 95% ground beef. All right, so let's add the remaining bit of ingredients in here. We need two and a half teaspoons of salt here. I'm not gonna measure. I'm gonna do my own measuring. Okay, that's about two, and that's about a half. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Here is a half a teaspoon of allspice. This is kind of a secret ingredient for this dish and for stroganoff, and you will notice a lot of similarities between the two of these. Okay, pepper. All right, this is the two eggs. And yeah, if you do have your bro, bro gloves, now is the time to take them out. I gotta stop. Wait, I do have bro gloves. I bought them. This is when Sip and Feast jumps the shark. I talked about Fawn. I said Fawn like 20 times today. I actually have an unopened box of bro gloves. I'm gonna mix the meat right now. And the beauty of doing these type of meatballs, a Swedish meatball, you kind of over mix. Typically, if somebody will tell you when you're doing an Italian meatball, they'll be like, really be careful on the mixing, but that doesn't really matter either. But here you can just go at it. I can tell right now, I probably need, I'm gonna need more breadcrumbs. It's too, it's too moist. This, this mixture is way too moist. So we're gonna add breadcrumbs in here and this is what we're gonna show you how to do it. Do like a half a cup to start. Do a little bit more, about a quarter cup. All right, I think this should be, this should be good. And I just added plain, just make sure you mix these in well so that they can actually hydrate so you don't have like dry spots. All you have to do to make them not stick to your hands is dip your hands in water. So I have a bowl of water here. You could also use olive oil, like a little olive oil and do it each time. So you can do one about this size or you can go much smaller. So you can wet your hands between each chew, I would say, and then just go back for more. And you know, the size I'm making these is about one inch to one and a quarter inch diameter or 26 mil to 32 mil. All right, we're gonna roll them all up and then we will bake them. Let's get these in the oven, 400 degrees, for 20 minutes, give or take. And if you like them a little browner, towards that like last two minutes, just hit your broiler up. Simple as that. We're gonna make the sauce as we're baking these. Do you wanna just remind folks that if they wanna fry them, the instructions to fry are on the website? Yes. Thank you, Tyra. The instructions are on the website. If you are going to do it, just simply don't crowd them. It's gonna take you probably two, three batches to do all these meatballs. 360 to 370 degree oil. You can uh, even shallow fry them. Putting these in the oven now, we're gonna be able to make our sauce, which is gonna speed it up. I have this pan here. This is a 4.5 quart kind of high walled uh, pan, which is perfect because we wanna be able to do the sauce and fit all our meatballs in. Meatballs, we made about 40 to 60, depending on the size you've rolled them. So if you don't have something like this, just use like a, he a high wall pot, Dutch oven or whatever. I got medium heat here maybe a touch less. And we're just gonna make a roux. So I have seven tablespoons of butter and seven tablespoons of flour. You could also do this with oil, but I think it's better with butter. Okay, that's good enough. The butter's not melted all the way, but it's fine. All right, we got the seven uh, tablespoons of flour. I also am boiling water for the egg noodles, if you want that. If you're just gonna have the meatballs by itself, then you don't have to worry about it. And don't worry, you don't have to time it right because you can 
have your meatball sitting off to the side. You could do this like, you could do this a day in advance. Again, like a little bit less than medium. I just wanna cook this till it's brown, not brown, but lightly golden, about three to five minutes here. It's gonna give a little bit more flavor by cooking this flour out a bit. If you think you're burning it all, just take your heat, take it off the heat and just go like that, okay? Simple. All right, it's been about four minutes. That's the color that we're looking at here. You just wanna get a little bit of a nutty smell and color like that. So here is the white wine. This is half a cup of dry white wine. If you don't wanna use this, just omit this step and you're fine. Just cook it for 30 seconds. Don't worry about it. Don't worry, like you're not gonna like, you don't need to cook this out, all right? It's, it's fine. So here's four cups. If you have homemade chicken stock, by all means use it. If not, four cups of stock made with low sodium chicken base. You could also use beef base here. Okay, I'm gonna pour this in and just whisk it. Just whisk this and we're gonna bring this to a boil. Really simple, making a very simple gravy here. And I'm using four cups of liquid because we wanna have enough for that pack of egg noodles, which is 12 ounces. Meatballs are fine, they're sitting over there, they're good. What I did was I cooked them for 15 minutes at 400, then I broiled them for like two minutes, very high up I got them, okay? Like, so they get nice. And then I turn, I flipped some of them. It was a pain to flip them all, but. All right, I'm gonna turn this heat up a little bit. And I just like kind of turned it off because what I did was I also boiled my butter noodles. You won't get any clumps as long as you're whisking. And I was whisking with one of these nylon. So you don't uh, scratch your pan. This is a quarter teaspoon of allspice and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. It's good to start off with this amount and then you can just add more. You wanna dial your sauce in at the end. If you put too much now, you can't do anything about it. You can't take it away. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire. Yeah, and if you think you don't like Worcestershire, don't use so much there to start off with. Dijon mustard. These are all like tangy ingredients. I didn't talk about the lingonberry jam and we will use that at the end. So I think that's actually a key to, to really enjoy Swedish meatballs. So I'm just whisking these ingredients in here. All right, so I want this to bubble a little bit to thicken, but when we put the meatballs in, it's gonna thicken more too. Here's the cream. This is a half a cup of heavy cream. You could just use heavy cream for this. You don't have to use a sour cream, but I like it. All right, let's bring this to a simmer. Now it's bubbling, we're letting it simmer. Why don't you say hi to everybody, hi. David? They, they, they thought you left, like you're gone. <laughs> so Sammy asked if there was egg noodles. Sammy, there are the egg noodles. Her and James, they, that's all they want to eat. They don't even want to have the meatballs yeah. in the sauce. It smells like the other day though, right? Yes. All right, so this is fine. You can break, bring it back down. Okay, a little bit below medium. All you got to do to temper is just put a little bit of hot into your sour cream, which is what we want to do. So just like this, just to start, and then just mix it around. So what you're doing essentially is you're just bringing up the temperature of the sour cream so it doesn't uh, break apart, like curdle basically. The reason you use heavy cream in these sauces is because it will never break on you. I mean, you can get it to break, I think, if, I think there's a way to do it, but it's hard because heavy cream in America, the United States of America is 37% fat. Okay, so what I'm doing is just bringing up the temperature again. Now I can put a bigger ladle in there like that. And now it's fine. I can add it all in. All right, so that's a good consistency with the sauce. The tanginess is so good. It needs a little bit of salt and a good amount of pepper. You know, if you don't want black specks, use white pepper, but I don't care. Okay, a little bit of salt, do like about that much. It's about a half a teaspoon of uh, kosher salt. So this consistency is good, right? Like this. When the meatballs go in there too, the starch from the meatballs, the bread, that's gonna further thicken it, which is gonna be fine. If it ends up getting too thick for you, just a little bit of water, half a cup, half a cup of chicken stock. That's all you have to do. Okay, here's our meatballs. They're perfect. They barely let off any um, fat. You can get some of that fat if you want. Like you could deglaze the bottom of that pan. You can put this pan on heat, you can deglaze it, but we got enough flavor in here. We do. Let's let this simmer for about seven, 10, 12 minutes, and then we will serve it up and bring the taste tester down. Let's, uh, let me know what you think of it, Tara. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try one without the lingonberry, and then I'm gonna try it with. Mmm, that's good. I mean, I think it's better with the lingonberry. It is. You it's know what? It's so good. It's really good without it, too. It reminds me a lot of cranberries, yes. so if you like a sweet and savory combination, I think this is perfect. 
There's not too much sugar. It's nine grams uh, per tablespoon. Well, maybe that is too much. I'm gonna link it. This is delicious. In the description for, because I don't know if you're gonna be able to find this locally. I think I've seen it in Stop and Shop before, okay. but they didn't have it. I, I put it on Amazon to show you. I, I would honestly prefer you not to use the Amazon links. They, everything is, especially mm. with the food, is so inflated. With the Italian ingredients specifically, like we get these things for $3 here for a jar. It's like $19 on Amazon. So this one, this probably costs $4 in the store. I don't know what it's gonna cost when I link it, but I am gonna link it if you want to experience it exactly how Tower is experiencing Yeah, I can't stop eating it. Does it need more allspice, more nutmeg? More wish um, sheer. You know what? Can I try it with like a little a little bit of more allspice? Allspice or nutmeg? Allspice. You know? Allspice. Some people think allspice is a combination of spices. It's yeah. not. It's its no. own thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so that's a good amount. So I just did add a good is. amount. So yeah. let me see. Mmm. Mm, right? So yeah, I, de I definitely think you could add more. You can here. definitely add more. I think you could add more nutmeg if you want, too. All right. Well, what does it get, Tara? All right. I'm going to give it a nine. I think it's delicious. I think you could go with a little bit okay. more of the spice to bring it up to a 10. Meatball consistency, texture, all that. The good. meatball consistency is perfect. In fact, I will say that I know you baked these today. Yes. You made them last week and fried you them. fried them. I actually think they taste a lot better Okay. This way. So yeah, and a lot of people will agree with that. Frying, yeah. frying will always give them a, a bigger crust. And yeah. I like the textural element of a fried one, but baking them will give you a more tender meatball, in my mm -hmm. opinion. The the gravy is so good. I I didn't get like a full taste of it until I tried it on the buttered noodle because I was getting a lot of the meatball flavor yeah. from the meatball. The gravy is fantastic. All right. Well, so thank I'm giving you. it a nine. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate our hard ratings too. We'll see you next time.